Welcome back. We're here to look at Saturday afternoon's Premier League match between Newcastle and Stoke. Barnes will start with the home side. There was that massive derby last time, but it's now six defeats in a row against Sunderland after they lost 3 0. Yeah, dreadful defeat, really, for the club. And particularly after winning 6 2 against Norwich, you thought maybe they'd start to kickstart their season. It was the one that McLaren, the, perfor the performance he'd be finally waiting for since he took over. And he's, he'd said one of those had been coming from the start. And to be fair, in that Sunderland match, they performed well again, particularly in the first half. You know, it was one way traffic for most of it. They had the better of the chances, but then there was that highly contentious penalty uh, right on the stroke of half time. Sunderland for me never a penalty I think it was decent defending from Collagen he came across shepherded the ball back to the keeper and for them to, him to be sent off even Sam Allardyce said after the match that it shouldn't have been a red card as well as a penalty he thought pen penalty was punishment enough just very contentious and you can see why Newcastle was so upset about that one being given all their players came out after and said it was a ridiculous red card it has been overturned by the FA and rightly so I think but that really changed the game to, for him to for Newcastle to go down to ten men after such a good first half performance and having had a penalty shot of their own turned down moments before that. Sunderland were always going to be favourites from then on. Even then, though, you didn't feel Sunderland were really home and dry until that third goal in the final ten minutes. Newcastle they had their chances even with with ten men and McLaren can be happy with the performance they put in with ten men both uh, in the second half and with eleven men in the first half. But that result, that three 0 against Sunderland. That's going to take a lot of getting over because it would have really hurt Newcastle. Definitely, and leaves them 19th in the table. That obviously sees Sunderland go above them in the bottom three as it is. I share a different view on the penalty. I think it was uh, a penalty person. I think the, it was right for the red card to be overturned. As the FA said, yeah, it was obvious the referee got it wrong because Rob Elliott was right there getting the ball. Fletcher was not getting it. But, I mean, you say there about shepherding it out. I think to shepherd out, you just have to use your body. His elbow clearly came away from his body and was like a shove with the elbow. I think Fletcher couldn't have stayed up. I don't think he really like fell easily. I think it was excessive force and just so unnecessary from Colicini. Very, very stupid. And Colicini, you know, he can have games where he'll be a complete standout player. You know, he would just do amazing things. But too often for me, he makes like key mistakes in Newcastle. And it, he's cost them many games in the last couple of seasons, I think. So, really, really poor result for them. And certainly, McLaren now back under pressure. You know, that was a big, big game for him. Obviously, it was a huge game for both managers. Allardyce, his first home game as well. So, both managers, Allardyce ended up on the you know winning side. And you wonder, is McLaren now back sort of in that, you know, one bad win away from being sacked? Because the Norwich game maybe bought him a bit of time. But I think certainly in this one, this is another huge game for them. Stoke at home, you know, another perhaps winnable game for them at St James's Park. And... Yeah, they'll need to bounce back because that defeats La Sunderland is just such a crushing blow. It's a bit of a strange one with Newcastle at the moment because their, their on-field performances, some of their players are starting to hit a bit of form, but the results aren't coming with the obvious exception of that Norwich one. That's their only win of the season. They've only got six points, joint worst goal difference, no team's conceded more. So all those stats are, are pretty damning for them. And obviously, as we mentioned, 19th in the table, only Aston Villa below them, and we know how poor form they've been on. But the likes of Barnaldum, who got four goals against Norwich, he's looked good since coming in. Mitrovic is starting to improve after a pretty shaky start and a questionable disciplinary record in his first few games. There are positive signs for Newcastle. You mentioned Colaccini there. Went at his best, he is a fantastic defender. He's so good in defence. Obviously, the Newcastle, they haven't had any luck with their injuries. They've got a long, long injury list, but... They, there are positive signs for them. I think McLaren, it could be a few games away from turning a bit of a corner. If they give him a bit of time, I mean, I would be surprised if Newcastle were relegated this season, if, even if they kept McLaren in charge, even though they've been in such poor form so far this season. I think there's enough signs of positivity for them to be hopeful of staying in the division. Yeah, I'm sure that's the case among the fans because they, like you said, they, in, that, in the first half in that Sunderland game, they absolutely battered Sunderland. They had so many chances they couldn't quite get the goal and then obviously the, the decision, you know, the game swung on that you know, penalty decision and I think they'll be quite confident coming up against the Stoke side here who sit 14th in the table. Last weekend they had home against Watford. I think most people had that down as the way Stoke were playing as a home banker but 2-0 defeat there at home against the Watford side who really struggling for goals themselves this season. It was a real surprise and you know, certainly they just weren't in their best in that game, Stoke. The goal they conceded, there was an unfortunate slip which allowed Deeney just that yard of space he needed. And he was obviously a striker quite low on confidence because he'd gone nine games without scoring a goal. So they offered, they gave him his first Premier League goal and then the second goal was a mistake out on the wing, you know, dilly-dallying on the ball. And then uh, I think Igalo nicked it, put it into Abdi. And then Butland, you know, maybe he was expecting the pass out to Deeney or maybe a curler, but he let it in at his near post. It was a good strike from Abdi, but I think Butland, we annoyed at himself for laying it in his near post. So that was a disappointing result for them and no goals in that game. Only West Brom and Watford have scored fewer than them, so that's a you know, another bad point for Stoke. Certainly they have improved of late, but that result last weekend against Watford, a really bad one. Yeah, but for me that was a bit of an anomaly of a result. As we mentioned, they've won four in a row going into that match. 
and they were looking for a response. I'd be surprised if they had played badly, as, that badly under Mark Hughes. It was his 100th game in charge and probably the worst performance they've ever had under him. They bounced back against Chelsea in the League Cup on Tuesday night. That was a good performance. Mm. Perhaps a little fortunate to go into the break um, uh, still level after Chelsea had one cleared off the line. Ramirez missed an, o um, an open goal. Zuma later in the game hit the post as well. So Chelsea certainly had their chances. And you mentioned Butland perhaps being at fault for that second Watford goal. For me, it was more a defensive error, obviously, at the start. But then Philip Volscheid coming across, he was so slow to come across and actually block the shot. So I wouldn't put Butland at fault for that. But he had a fantastic performance against Chelsea. There was a number of saves, one in particular in extra time, where he just tipped it. It just came off the, uh, the shin of Kennedy. Didn't know much about it. Butland had to react so quickly to turn it around and keep his side in the in the competition really with that. And then obviously made that fantastic save from Hazard uh, with the winning penalty, what proved to be the winning penalty. So he was back on top form. He's been in fantastic form this season. And just the defensive performance from everyone, the whole team, mm -hmm mucked in and especially in extra time when they were down to 10 men you would have had to give Chelsea uh, the, they were massive favourites after they got that late equaliser and then Bardsley got sent off straight after that so for Stoke to hold out for the extra 30 minutes under some heavy heavy pressure and the likes of Arnautovic his work rate's been questioned mm. um, in recent years, but he just put everything in for the team. He was he was such a good outlet for them. Get getting forward, almost came close to winning it in extra time actually twice for Stoke. So all round the the team put everything into that performance. The youth could barely stand at the final whistle because he he had worked so hard for the team, dropping into right back after Bards he got sent off. There was a definite um, response from Mark Hughes' side, and I think they'll be pretty confident. They've won the last three away games now without conceding a goal. We usually think of Stoke as being a fortress at the Britannia Stadium, but their home form hasn't actually been that great this so far this season. It's their away form which has got the most points. One, all, three 1-0 one wins in a row. Had won one in 12 and none in nine before that away from home. So things are certainly improve, improving on the road there. And they'll be confident going into this game, I think. So do you see them winning this one then? What's your score prediction? I think, as I mentioned, I think Newcastle aren't too far away from getting a good result. But after such a damning result against Sunderland and Stoke, they'll be buoyed. They might be tired from that Chelsea performance, but they'll be buoyed by the result going through to the quarterfinals at the expense of the holders in the competition. I can see Stoke nicking this one 1-0. One 1-0? Nil. One nil. I'm actually going to go the other way. I think you know, playing 120 minutes, you know, the last 30 minutes with 10 men in midweek, I think that could hurt Stoke. And I just think Newcastle, I was, I was really impressed with them in the first half against Sunderland. I think on another day they would have easily won that match. And just the way it went, they were a bit unlucky. Obviously, Colaccini will be able to play in this one after the red car was seen. So I'm going to go for a 2-1 home win. So one for Stoke and one for Newcastle. Thanks for joining us.